I've always had a bit of a fascination with authoring formats, and Typist is the latest to capture my attention. Typist is a tool written in Rust, kind of comparative to Latex or LaTeX, however you have read that and pronounced it in your head. The short pitch is basically, it's kind of like Markdown with functions. So on the left here, you can see like equals instead of a hash for a heading, dashes for lists, and then this kind of like hash with a figure, which is kind of like a function call, etc. So there's a bit of a scripting language here. There's a bit of uh, styling and things that you can set up, but I've really been enjoying working with this. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit. So here are two, uh, we'll call them books. They don't have a lot of content um, and I'm not committing to actually, actually work on them and ship them but I wanted to see what it would look like with kind of a large table of contents and a small table of contents and see what I could do with styling and things like that. So this is an automatically generated table of contents here. You can see the large version on the left and the smaller version on the right. The heading and the styling of the heading with the underline is all set up through typist styling mechanisms as are the kind of like heading sections for the table of contents, each of the individual numberings. This is actually querying the entire document for all of the headings and then putting those out through a list. And this can extend over multiple pages, which is really cool. Blank page, you can see numbering for each of these pages at the bottom. I'm using regular numbering right now. And then we get another heading on the top right, some stylized quoting, couple of paragraphs, and then kind of like section breaks is what I'm calling these right now. Also really interestingly built in, it already has code highlighting. And this is powered by Syntact, which is another Rust crate. So all of the Rust function keyword highlighting and stuff like that already works inside of this PDF, which is wonderful because I do a lot of writing for Rust. So overall, that's kind of what I'm working with. It's not too detailed. You can see even in the sample here, they have an actually a collaborative environment that you can write inside of. They have suggested that this isn't to be used for things that you want to live forever or like keep around uh, or persist. So I'm not using it for the stuff that I was just writing, but it is quite nice. And you can see that it has more of like a paper dissertation formatting on the right hand side here. I have two projects set up here. One I'm calling Rust Adventure and one I'm calling WGPU Adventure. To compile them, it's just TYPST, which you can install via Homebrew. Then the entry point, which I'm calling main.typist, and the output, which is rustadventure.pdf in the revisions folder. So you can have multiple typist files that can all get compiled into one large PDF, and you can organize your code and your files like that, which is really nice for me. So immediately right off the bat, we've got some text right at the top. I've got a template that is being used for the entire document, basically, that we'll go over in a little bit. I've got an import, so there's a module system for the scripting um, and also for the different stylings and stuff like that. Inside of lib.typist, I've got the template. I've got some show styles is what they're called for headings, but headings only where the heading level is one. And then I say, okay, there's a page break. We align right. We set the text with a specific font. We're going to underline and then we're going to small caps all the content and have some vertical spacing of 2 EM. Similar for heading level uh, 2, things like that. You can set the numbering style. You can set how raw text should show up and so on and so forth. So here we've got doc down here, which is, where is doc? Doc is at the template. It's the argument that we're passing into this template function. So let template is how you define functions. And then these square brackets are kind of just like, okay, render all the rest of it out. So you can see here, we've got import lib.typist, and then we've got the show rule for lib.template, which encapsulates everything. Again, it's very much like markdown to write other than these function calls. So equals is actually the heading instead of hash, which I don't mind at all. And you can include any number of files. Here's a bunch of files. So I've got part one, part two, part three, part four, with a bunch of sections inside of them. Here's a Y Rust one. So I'll go into part one and go to the Y Rust and turn on word wrap so you can see it. And we're bringing in the lib.typist file, which allows us to access functions defined in that file under the lib namespace. So whatever the file name of this file that you bring in, that's what the module name is. So lib.quote, and then I pass in, uh, in this case, just a body for the quote. If we go look at lib, you can see down here, uh, I've defined quote as taking a default body argument of test quote, adding some vertical spacing, doing a rectangle, with some inset and a stroke, but only on the left. So you can see that it's not styled in any particular, like you don't use CSS style rules or something like that. This is custom. So it does take a little bit of getting used to, but it is decent to use once you do get used to it. So we set the text and then at the end, we say, take the body and render that out with all these styling rules applied. So that we can then take that quote function, like we saw, 
and use it wherever we want. So lib.quote with the body ends up giving this quote styling right here. Now you do have like italics and strong or bold or whatever with underscores and things like that. Uh, the font I'm using doesn't have an italicized style, unfortunately, um, because I didn't purchase it because <laughs> I didn't think I was going to use it. So uh, this won't show as italicized for me, but otherwise that would be right here. And other than that, it's a lot just like writing Markdown. You write however you want to write. Uh, in this case, we have special syntax for numbered lists. So plus, plus, plus will automatically handle the numbering for you, which is honestly really nice. So like, why not Rust? One, two, three right here. I didn't need to think about which numbers those should be, which I love, honestly. You also got unsiled lists with dash and writing code is just the same way that you would write code in Markdown. It's three backticks. I think there's another way to write code as well, uh, but I wasn't using it. So three backticks, name of the language, and then all of the Rust code, which is wonderful. We've got simple things like page breaks and complex logic, or as much complex logic as we want. For example, I did a custom outline. The outline, of course, being this table of contents. So it's these headings and these subheadings all listed in the same table of contents. You know, And if you click on one, let's say click on serverless functions, it sends me to that page, which is really cool. Um, there isn't so much accessibility stuff yet, but I think they are working on it. They're also working on HTML export. So right now it only exports to PDF, but it will do HTML export as well in the future. So if we let outline, we're defining an outline function with a default title of contents, a default depth of none, and an indent of false. So we've got the heading, which is the title. So contents with no numbering, some vertical space. And then we use this locate function, which is an example of more complex logic. So inside of this locate function, we're looking for elements that are headings after the element that we have here. And this is a little bit probably too complicated to go over right now, but more or less what we're doing is we're scanning for all the headings in the document and based on how far we should indent or what the depth of that heading is, then we are setting up different stylings. So you can do things like keep counters and whatnot. It also has a watch mode. So if I say don't want this, then I can save that and it just compiled it. I didn't even get a chance to say it's compiling before it was done. So the incremental compilation is actually really nice. So there's actually a ton more to typist. I've just been really enjoying working with it and writing in it, honestly. They compare to uh, Latex or LaTeX or however you want to pronounce that, Word and Google Docs. But for me, I'm honestly looking at it as a replacement for how I author my blog. So I'm looking forward to the HTML export being merged. There is, of course, a whole set of uh, mathematical equations and things that you would expect to use LaTeX for or LaTeX. The tutorial is really nice. It covers writing and typist, formatting and styling, and then creating your own template for your document. Highly encourage you to go through this if you have any interest in something like this in a tool like Typist. There's also, of course, a reference, which I find myself referring to quite a bit. And there's lists of all sorts of things, right? So paragraph breaks, emphasis, strong, raw text, which is kind of like inline code, links and labels and references and bulleted lists and numbered lists and headings and smart quotes and all sorts of different things. There's math support and for bailing out comments and escape sequences so they won't show up in your PDF at the end. We saw a little bit about scripting. It's done through these set rules so you can set the numbering on a heading. If we want to find out what we can actually do, if we go to the reference, in this case, we'll go to meta, we'll go to heading, we can go down to the documentation where the level is settable, the numbering style is settable, whether the heading should appear in the outline, the headings title, things like that. So all of these reference documents show you everything that you can actually put into any of these elements. There's some basic visualization right now, but if you go down and you look at, where is it? Ah, there it is, it's right on this page. Functions for plotting and diagrams aren't yet available. So right now all you have is kind of like basic circles and squares and rectangles. And to close this out and kind of sell it to you at the end, it's also got some advanced features like bibliographies that you can then cite in the middle of your document, which is something that I'm kind of pretty excited about because I reference a lot of work in my writing and keeping track of that is kind of difficult. So they've got their own YAML based format for like writing bibliography. And then you use a, like a site function to actually reference that in your document. I kind of like this. It's not too overbearing and it's got a lot of modern examples. So they call that Hayagriva. And if you go to the documentation and then you go to the example file, you can see a whole bunch of different examples for how to write the bibliography entry for a variety of modern formats. For example, here's one that is a GitHub issue, which is something that I'll commonly reference. And then here's one for a tweet or, you know, a regular article from Arxiv. Is that how you pronounce that? <laughs> In any case, it's very interesting. It's very deep. Um, they've thought about a lot of things that I don't have currently, and I'm pretty excited about it. 
And if you really want to get into it, you can compute arbitrary sort of expressions and have state in your document that you then share between different outputs. For example, here we let more equal compute x times two and x minus five, and then we compute 10 and compute x plus three, and then we use more, and you get new value as 10, 13, 26, and 21. So overall, typist, something I'm really excited about, wanted to share it with you. I'm kind of playing with it. I don't know if I'm gonna use it for a full book or if I'm just gonna to try to use it for a blog, but I am enjoying writing with it. So if this is something that you're interested in, this project is also written in Rust and is open source. So if you go to typist, you too can use and contribute to this document publishing system. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.